Super. Merci, Christy. Uh, hi, I hope you still have energies after this full day of debates. Not so many artistic events today, but talking about art and the effects that uh, Paintbrush Factory and the space is similar to this, and similar discourses had uh, impact in the last at least, I would say, 10 years. For the community, I would say 15 or 20. Um, and I like to present, and I'm happy that so many uh, guests are uh, here, also foreign. <laughs> And um, I would like to introduce uh, each of them and let them uh, just say their uh, name and affiliation or in, in what quality they are here. I won't say anything, so I can give the microphone to Stefan and each of you can say. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Lala. I'm not very sure about my quality, but the quantity is one. Um, my name is Stefan Teixanu, I'm the executive director of the Cluj Culture Center, an NGO that gathers many institutions and organizations in the field of culture. Probably I'm something like an entrepreneur, cultural manager. My name is Julia Popovic and as we were talking beforehand with Stefan about uh, our complex identities, please choose. I'm a cultural journalist for Observator Cultural. I'm a creative something, I don't know what they put on the, on the website for collect Collective A. I'm also working uh, as a counselor in the parliament uh, and uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah, and I'm also yeah, a student yeah. of law. <laughs> Okay, I am Istvan. I generally prefer to present myself as a citizen. I'm also a cultural contributor, and since 20 year, years, I've been working with the Artak Foundation. I'm Dan Pejoski. I'm, I'm working with him. <laughs> Just joking. I'm, I'm an artist, and I try to work with everybody here. Hi, I'm uh, Janos. I'm the foreign guest. Um, I'm from Budapest, uh, and graduated as an architect, and uh, I'm working uh, at the Contemporary Architecture Center, uh, CAKE, and uh, I'm here to represent uh, this association, this NGO, and uh, our ideas about cities. Sherbanci Ganash, I'm here to consolidate the majority of architects in this, uh, in this panel. Uh, I design, I teach, and I promote. <laughs> Each of you have been involved in the um, city life and independent culture uh, life in the cities or uh, having a f an effect upon the cities, being architect or being artist or also activists or also fighting for the rights of the uh, cultural sector uh, in the parliament or abroad. Um, can you tell us, also my questions won't be uh, targeting all of you, you can answer when you feel like or when you want. Um, we are wondering also after all these years and in the first panel also it was discussed that also the context has changed a lot since our uh, paintbrush factory occurred in the city, not only us have changed but also the context. What do you think about the last, let's say, at least 10 years of Romanian context and the effect of art and independent culture on it? Maybe it's a bigger question or take it as it is, fragmentize it and uh, tell us also. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to take over because we are a majority, but it seems to to uh, have the chance to start. When you invited us here and you send us the title of the debate, by the way, do you know what's panel in Romanian language? Panel. It's a kind of a wooden material. It's a kind of industrial wooden product. Uh, okay, I don't go further about it. It's a nice, it's a nice piece of, uh, of material which you can use for uh, doing fake wooden uh, furniture or whatever. Okay, uh, so I said, I said that I, I had serious problems with the title. 
do we need public spaces that support and produce independent critical civic art? And I may explain, because it's re related to your question. Uh, first thing is about public spaces. What, what's that public space? And in the last 10 years in Romania, I think we had a shift of attention towards public space. And especially speaking about my profession um, of architecture, we struggled with some results to transform public space from infrastructure to architecture. That happened in the last years. And I can mention the fact that public space was seen like something we need to uh, circulate from a place to another, to lay our uh, pipes of uh, sewage or uh, electricity or wires or things like this to park the cars and other things uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And we need a lot of budget for doing that. And the, the most important thing was to plumb the, the, the holes in the, in, the, in the street. But nowadays there are many public spaces which uh, became pedestrian uh, spaces, which became spaces for, for events and uh, other things. And uh, we managed to orient some of the public invest, uh, or administration towards uh, rethinking public space through architectural design competition. This happened in my, my profession and I will not go on. Uh, before saying that, do we need public spaces that support and produce independent critical civic art? No. Art is not produced by spaces, it's produced by people. Of course there is a relation with people and I'm prepared to talk about this, but it's not uh, the discussion, I think it should not start from the space in this sense. Space is not producing anything. Space is, is containing us, it's facilitating, it's we are interfering in space, but space is not, uh, is space is place, or should be place. I give. Just for the sheer fun of it. Actually, I also had some problems with the title, but for with a different part of it. Um, my, my problem was, do we need? Who's this we? And uh, then as I uh, read the title on, it was independent, public, and I was thinking, okay, so th actually the guys who are uh, for public will probably say yes, but the guys who are against public will probably not prefer having it. Then again, independent. Uh, the guys who are pretty much about dependence will not favor this kind of, uh, will not need it as bad. So it's just a, as a side note. Okay, next up. Involved also many years in the public space of Cluj. Yeah. And also uh, producing new places or new contexts that provoked authorities, provoked citizens. What is your taste after all this engagement? It's true. Um, actually, uh, I somehow feel that we are always uh, tamed, conditioned, pacified also by dictionary. And uh, because we had to use this uh, dictionary of public, private, of dependent, independent, and because we needed connection with other people who were familiar or who were monopolizing this kind of discourse, we started to use this, although we didn't really much prefer this terminology, but hey, this was the language that they were speaking, we were using it. Now, what I see in the last, uh, let's say, 10 years, 20 years, um, somehow the story of the Fabrica for me is that the crisis of 2008 cracked some real big concrete slabs and a little bit of earth appeared. And that's where the flower of Fabrica grew up. But after the crisis passed, and uh, the happy people of, uh, who are building the concrete city found this crack, they started to, oh, a little bit of concrete, a little bit of concrete, oh, a flower, fuck it. And uh, this, is the, this is the crisis of the Fabrica. That, uh, the crisis was the, the crack in which the possibility emerged and then slowly it starts to be re-concretized again, re the, the slabs are closing, and now we have to reinvent ourselves as, as flowers or so. Um, about independence, uh, what I see in the last 10 years after the, um, the moment of, of the crisis and the, potentially the potentiality of recombination is that there is this phenomenon of depoliticizing the citizen and uh, some, some of you may be familiar with the term gig economy. 
yes, that you are working contracts are shorter and shorter and shorter. This is typically uh, valid for cultural workers. But this is actually happening in other terms too. It's gig politics, it's gig citizenship. I, you, it's more and more ephemeral that you are stepping up as a citizen and have a voice and have a political engagement. And the rest is just concrete, concrete, thicker and thicker. Fuck off, that's, that's my diagnosis at, at the first glance. Well, uh, I'm a minority here from all points of view. I'm the only woman besides the moderator, and I'm mm, not an artist, not an architect, and I'm not working with the city and citizenship in none of my abilities and many identities. Um, and actually, part of my work is, uh, well, w convincing everybody about the need uh, for the artists to get out of the city. Because we have a lot of uh, the all the independent, uh, social, civic, uh, politically oriented uh, art that we are talking about happens in a handful of big cities. While we have 46% um, of people living in the countryside where there's uh, not a thread of public art whatsoever or publicly funded art or culture or anything except for the days of the village. And uh, basically I'm very happy to get out of Bucharest, the city which I love, because uh, there are too many artists and too many events per square meter per hour per day uh, for it to be relevant anymore. So, uh, because it's the only place with enough of a captive audience and enough sources of financing and enough vi visibility in terms of press, uh, everybody wants in Bucharest and everybody's delivering cultural events for, it for a very small bubble. Um, but, uh, so that's my, I'm, sort of displaced here because actually I I, <laughs> I cannot speak about uh, the, mm, these institutions and, and spaces in the city. Uh, but I was uh, actually thinking, uh, especially after listening to the panels uh, before this one, uh, about uh, why we are so obsessed with having a physical space. Because this is uh, uh, sort of for for the Romanian culture or the culture in Romania, uh, this is sort of a uh, historic uh, issue. We are basically stuck in a period between 1918, when the new Romanian state uh, took all the spaces built by the Hungarian Empire, uh, and 1948. So we are there. Uh, we are reliving the fight of the non-public, uh, sorry? <laughs> Continue, please. Um, uh, but Try to finalize your idea if you can. Also for no, I won't. I won't look for my ideas now. I will do it later. Thank you, Julia. So, because you ask about the context, so context is always changing, and uh, well, I, ca I can be a bit more relaxed and tell you that I finally got invited to the fabrica, <laughs> like ten years after when they closed down, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> as That's an artist. But on the other hand, I want to tell you that, um, well, it's my, my standard example is this. Like this country was divided in two by the notion of the salam with soya, salami of soya, right? 
So the people who stayed in Romania eat that kind of replacement of meat, and the people who left in the West were you know, separated by this kind of division. Today, soya is very healthy. So what was once a, s a subject of some kind of division between the rich and the poor or whatever is now the opposite, right? So the same with this. Um, we don't have, as the panel explained before us, the budgets are in question, less funding for independence in, so we finally have the chance to become radical and conceptual, right? <laughs> right? So, if you look at things in, in their kind of, not natural, but the progressive way, any of this kind of switch of context is a chance to reinvent or um, rethink your position, right, as an activist. When in the early 90s, when I started to be active in the, in the scene, I s first started with the newspaper, not with the galleries. Because the art in Romania at the time was super boring was nothing interesting happening in the galleries in the early 90s. But the newspapers were a, a different platform, right? So I started in the 90s and somewhere in 1998, an American curator asked me, well, but this is art in public space. <laughs> what you do in the newspaper? I said, what? What is this public space? Huh? So uh, as an artist and as a citizen, as a I learn the definition and the switch of the context, and I, I learn how to use mistakes, failure, unsuccesses, missed opportunities, and every kick was a kind of a, um, this was, the, this was the, um, the recipe and the trick, how to use any kick into your advantage. And I think maybe this for you here, and by the way, thank you very much for inviting me, finally. Uh, and finally, I'm showing like in plan B, right? <laughs> anyway. no. I made it to plan B. Ah. So um, I think there's an, uh, in spite of all these like emotional and very interesting statements about the soul in the morning, I think it's a moment, an, uh, an important moment to look at yourself here, all the work you did, all the energy, everything. And I think you should do the book. It was the discussion about writing down the book. You should write this history down, because otherwise they will write it for you. So you should put it down. You should put everything down, because it's really interesting. It's part of this guy, so. Yeah. Um, OK, I'm going to you say something. Have a background in the Hungarian context. Did you I know yeah, I, I, I can tell you about the Hungarian context of this whole question uh, and more especially about the Budapest context I, I uh, actually have two examples uh, to give you about public art in uh, in Budapest one is uh, something that we organized along the Danube uh, there used to be uh, one uh, festival called uh, Dunapest instead of uh, Budapest um, and um, we helped organize it uh, with the contemporary architecture uh, for this other NGO to uh, have a lot of uh, more professional aspect. And uh, we thought about a public art installation uh, competition for which uh, very many entries came. And so um, in the context of the Danube for a matter of one week, uh, there were these very extravagant uh, art installations all along the Danube. And this was a coordinated effect of uh, individual artists. Uh, coordinated by us and by the Dunapest crew. Uh, this was funded by the municipality of Budapest and uh, and it was something that uh, people just uh, started to look at and uh, made realize that uh, actually, hey, like uh, there's something on the side of the Danube because uh, I don't know how many of you know, but in Budapest uh, we have uh, as public space uh, pretty much non-existent uh, shorelines of the Danube. Uh, it's occupied by cars, and uh, it's not really public space. Well, not in that sense of uh, uh, of, of uh, civic uh, interactions. And, um, and so it's very interesting to point that out. And the other project I want to tell you about is, uh, is something that I don't even know anything about, but I just saw it uh, two days ago, by chance, biking on the side of the Danube, next to the cars. Uh, an art installation, completely bottom-up, uh, was set from the remaining woods uh, driven down on the Danube uh, 
uh, and it was this guy just sitting on the edge of the river, looking at the river. And uh, I just helped, uh, I just stopped and uh, couldn't help but wonder like who did it, why, and how can I go down there? And so it's uh, very interesting that uh, we s like the, the main question of, of uh, do we need public space that invites uh, actors to do it, to, to, to do uh, the art. And, uh, and I think that uh, I can agree with, uh, with you that uh, it's not really the space that defines it, but uh, probably the lack of art. So yeah, I don't know how to draw a conclusion from this. But uh, I thought about these two examples concerning the question. We all have to answer. You said you. Yeah. Okay. So the question was about. There was a lot also uh, overviewing actors in the city and also not so small scale, and you also see platforms and. Uh, no, the, the original question was about the transformation of, of, the, of the. Do you see the context and also the effects mm -hmm. yeah. of art and culture so within, let's see, the city as the first I question, I but also getting out of the bubble, it's also a good idea, of course. Also I'm not even around for 10 years in the in the, in the culture scene um, so uh, and and I think that's one of the most uh, important transformations of, of the uh, in, in the scene uh, after 10 years not that I'm here but there are many other people here uh, my first interactions were actually with the with the with the fabrica de pensula and this is what inspired me to get into the into the into the culture field so I think um, we are de we are definitely more working with culture now, at least in Cluj, uh, and this is also, uh, or especially because of the of the Fabrica de Pensule. My first in my first interaction with the Fabrica was when you guys were just starting, and one of your colleagues came to me as a, I was the president of the Young Entrepreneurs uh, Federation back then, and uh, uh, she said uh, we are doing this uh, new space, we are working on this new space. Maybe you can help us with some sponsorship. So that that was the only connection between the, the the culture, the artistic scene back then, and probably the rest of the world or the rest of the city. Um, I did manage to to, to 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 offer some good context then, but uh, it took me, I think, four or five years to to return to to the fabrica as a as a as a as a, as a, as a consumer, as a, as a, as a as a person interested in what 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 you are doing here. Um, and after I did that, I, I started to, to get inspiration for my own projects in, in, in culture. So I think this is the main, the main transformation of the, of the social and cultural context, at least in Cluj. Uh, this is the main difference between uh, the present time and, and 10 years ago. Uh, there are more people engaged and there are more people inspired. And I think that uh, Fabrica w has a lot to do with it because there, there are many little Fabricas now around, uh, I think. It's at the level of the city, also maybe the question is for you, more outside, uh, not only, uh, I'm not talking only about abstractly, uh, how radicalized you see the possibility of art in the city, also for to the others. Is yeah. there a time to do this in this context, or it's time to disappear and go in uh, other bubbles, or to just quit, or rethink our ways? Um, b before we started this conversation, I asked Ivan if there was anyone from the city hall invited here, and uh, were officially and, and w when we found out that uh, they were, and but they didn't accept, uh, I said, okay, so probably it's going to be me speaking on, <laughs> on their behalf somehow because they are our main patrons at the Cluj Culture Center. Um, I don't know. It uh, coming from the from the culture field now. It's it's the the need the need to go on uh, and and to reinvent. It's it's kind of obvious. But I think the context changed uh, enough uh, for all of us to to also question and rediscuss the relationship with the with the with the public authorities. Uh, when 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 you're talking about uh, uh, supporting arts and, uh, and and culture in the city, because the only thing that they are doing it they are doing right now in this in this field is to offer these these grants that are highly questionable as well. Um, but but I think it's I think it's also time that uh, that, that the that the artists that are uh, interested in in strengthening this this connection put more pressure on them to 
uh, to, to offer some, some spaces as well, some infrastructure as well. Um, some some will, 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 will remain activists and will, will fight other battles, other battles, but I think they are, there is a pretty important critical mass in, in Cluj that can actually work, work with, with, with the city, like with the, with the official administration to, uh, to improve this situation. And also, I think each of you, in a way or another, had a relationship with the authorities, national or local. And maybe some of you have some, some statements to give, because that was also my question before the debate for you, to think about the relationship with the authorities. Because for many of us, this relationship ruined our energies also and uh, made us more tactical than strategical sometimes. <laughs> Just to, to go on for one minute, since I have the mic, um, I, I think that uh, they, are, they are activists and they are uh, collectivists, um, and probably I'm, I'm, I'm part of the second uh, type. Um, and I, as, I, as I said, uh, I think it's important that, that we, we also try to, to get this p perspective of supporting the local administration and supporting the business sector to understand us better, uh, not only uh, to to just claim uh, to just claim uh, default support from them. So I'm I'm I think I'm part of this species, and but the other the other species I, I was talking about the the, the artist uh, the the intrinsic artist has the same right to, to, to claim to claim support and to claim uh, context offered offered to him. So I think. Or her. So I think now it's it's a high time it's high time we, s we split responsibilities between the two species and uh, because there are different uh, battles to, to to take and uh, I think they are they are undertaken. I would say there is the third also the private one who we always miss in the discussions. Mm. Uh, just for fun. All day we were complaining about, oh, we need to invite the political to, to, to watch us, to see us, to acknowledge us, to understand us, to support us, etc. Actually, we are forgetting the fact that above the clouds of the politics is the money guys, is the Churchill, uh, is the Nicoara, uh, is the Mets, is the, and I can tell you 10 more names, yes? And the idea is that, uh, in my humble opinion, the political clouds are actually just the guys who are getting the money from left to right and giving the allowances. Those are not the, the, the biggest guys. The biggest guys are the money guys, the, the oligarchs. And that's it. And we are always forgetting to talk about them. But in ter so thank you for, for bringing back the discussion uh, also to the economics, yes, and to the private kind of economics. So what I see is uh, getting back to the idea of space. Uh, I prefer to talk about discursive space, and I like to talk about control of discursive space. Uh, discursive space. Now, if I take these two kinds of uh, controls, uh, control by privatization and control by political control, then I can see a pretty heavy hand in the last years on independent culture. The emergence of uh, hardcore private actions and the logic of, of uh, private digestion of production, consumption, what not, diffusion of art. And the second is politically controlling the channels, the actors, which is also done by agents, by extensions of the ruthless or the, the, the crude political force as it is embodied. But again, these are not the actual actors. The actual actors are the money guys. There was uh, some periods in which it was not so bad. Uh, for example, in the early 90s, uh, there were some international funds that could make you bleed, like Shorosh. Praise his name. <laughs> then uh, European Cultural Foundation, then European uh, cultural projects, co cooperation projects that you could, uh, you could use. Uh, these were some kind of bubble that could get you to international acknowledgement so you can get back and be a prophet in your own country. Many of us became 
known in Europe before we could get known in Romania, before we could get known in Cluj. Um, then uh, Soros started to withdraw, the European Union started to, um, uh, getting European money was uh, more and more a matter of becoming part of bigger and bigger networks. Uh, cultural uh, the cultural ministry cut the, the share of the Romanian actors they were supposed to pay, they didn't, and ever since then it is just dragging on, dragging on, always on the brink of bankruptcy. That's, uh, that's the part. And in terms of um, political control, I I prefer not even to talk about national politi uh, cultural politics because it's such a mess of chaos and unpredictable it is as it is just a background noise. What I'm uh, uh, happy to talk about is local, local context, local cultural politics and how it is enacted through institutions, through financing, through financing logic, through control of uh, your discourse controlling discursive space. And in these terms, my experiences are pretty shitty. <laughs> okay, but uh, more about this later, and I stop now. Anybody from you? Yeah. On, the, on the question of working with the private sector, um, my, my, my previous answer was about a need to also support them understand us better. And um, and I think um, for 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 some of us works quite quite well. My 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 first uh, my first relevant project, so to say, uh, touching upon culture and citizenship and public space was was uh, Jazz in the Park, the festival we I co-founded years ago. Um, okay, there's ma many things that are questionable uh, about it, but uh, one one thing. Uh, um, is that it? It's it's a it's a culture project that has more than seventy percent private funds right now. So just I'm not involved with, with it anymore. But just in the part now is not is only getting ten percent local or, or national funding I in in this budget. So I think that the the possibilities are, are the the possibility the opportunities are are numerous as as this one said. But then the question is where are you going to draw your line, your pink line, or your, 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 your ethical line? Uh, when does, does this uh, money pressure start to affect your, your, your art or your discourse? So it's the classical question, but I just want to reinforce that the possibilities are there. And it's from my point of view, it's, it's obviously possible that we, we, can, we can also think about other funding mechanisms than just uh, the local or, n or national policy. From my experience also, I feel like it's not only drawing a line sometimes or getting funds from the authorities. It's also how you feel used in certain games. And once you feel aware about you in the, I'm talking about the city game, the urban game, then what do you do? You continue, you work for the citizens and with the artists or you retreat or you defeat the authorities or well, Julia mentioned earlier that maybe the, the idea of a space to have a, it's like a trap, right? So because then you have to run for, you have to have the money for rent, and then the bigger the space, the bigger the rent. So, well, I will, I will link it to a question earlier in some panels, Ishvan said about having a voice and how we lost the voice. Sometimes when things are very good, you you forgot to talk because the things are good, so it's nice. Uh, our shows go through, the catalog are printed, you got invitation, life is good. So um, I will I will say, Julia, I will go for the space because somehow in the if you, if you are not you, do you don't have an address, you don't exist, and sometimes it's very complicated to maintain a certain integrity if you are moving around and you are very flexible but I it is a strategy and you decide this is a strategy to escape and go it can work and now linking to the to what you ask uh, Lala about talking with the people in power right well it never worked for me never so it's simply avoided. So I am associating myself with the people who knows to talk with the people in power. 
and um, I realized at a certain age and certain skills that if I can contribute to all this kind of struggle with my drawings or my presence or my name or my signature or my body, then I give it. I give my body, I give my name, I give my drawing. But I will never ever go again in this play of convincing somebody that I have to have a place in this world. Fuck you all. You know. No. I don't want to convince nobody. I, uh, I'm always, in the last 20 something years, I'm in a hybrid economy. I, I, I live out of my drawings. And I did that from the communist time. And, uh, and I, working, I was working constantly. So I generate my income all the time. It was not easy, not easy even today. So I don't want to convince no minister, no expert, nothing, that I have to have a place to show or a place to express my views. But, but I, I want to associate myself with, you know, I usually, I'm invited and I come with energy when it's a beginning, when people, you know, have a projection and things can go good. So this is the first time I'm invited to the end <laughs> of something, which is can be also a beginning, right? So I think, it's well, I, I don't want to project necessarily an optimistic view or something, but I want to say, well, we, we have to fight for this voice. We have to have a voice. Public space, no way. We have to claim it back. Because otherwise they will fill it with uh, untold festivals and uh, video mapping. And everybody will... Everybody will be happy, right? Everybody's happy. Ah, what beautiful. You know. So no, 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 this is a peace of mind too. And I have a voice in this space. And I have a voice in politics too. And for the first time in the post-1989 you know, history, maybe the next parliament of this country will have some people we can talk with, right? Apparently, the things in politics seems a bit optimistic, right? No? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually what I wanted to say is, is that uh, even if uh, I'm totally out of place in this discussion, since I'm not working with this, uh, I actually uh, listen to a lot of similar conversations. Uh, and at some point, uh, I'm not very... I, I, oh I wonder, it's, it's a question that I ponder upon, let's say. Uh, we are so, at some point, obsessed with having a physical space that we are actually somehow uh, not in pace with what's happening as uh, modes of production, because actually we are now, uh, 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 actually for performing arts, for live performing arts, space used to be, a physical space used to be more important than it is today. Because now, uh, actually, most of the theater and, uh, and dance tends to get out of this physical limited uh, space. But, but we are stuck into this model because actually we never had that space. And we, we crave for that space even uh, and uh, and this you know somehow limits our modes of production because we we cannot get out of that of, 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 of that place of mind which is the physical place even if everything in terms of how uh, uh, performing uh, live performing arts are producing uh, means getting out of this and at the same time you know the physical space is what is it because from the point of view of the public administration, it uh, seems uh, uh, to be something between a bribe and uh, a confined place to close down all the, the, the uh, uh, menacing animals, you know? It's like they have a designated place where to put the artist. Uh, at least with, uh, in Bucharest, with all the public institution, it's like that. We bribe somebody to run a place to confine everybody. Uh, but is it, why we need a physical, a physical space besides the, uh, the ad address that you are mentioning? Is it a gathering place? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, what is it? 
because in, in a matter of minutes, in this kind of conversations, we tend to jump into how to finance something like that and where to get it in, and in, in, in what neighborhood. But what is it? Okay, so uh, I can actually relate to that uh, question very much because uh, KIC uh, as an institution or as an association, uh, as we call ourselves, uh, we didn't really have a place. At first, uh, when uh, the whole thing started, I was in high school back then, so I was not part of uh, uh, the NGO. Uh, but it was urbanists and uh, sociologists, architects uh, and activists who wanted to do something about the city because there was a lack of uh, public discourse about the built environment. Uh, there was not any programs about uh, public space and uh, any discussion on, on that matter. So uh, they formed this uh, NGO, it was in 2006, um, and uh, they signed a contract with uh, the government for a 10-year contract to uh, put it in an abandoned factory on the, well, not the center of the city, but not the outskirts of the city, so in the middle zone. After two years, uh, the contract was uh, uh, canceled and the uh, cake had to move. And so uh, ever since that, uh, hmm? yes. We got kicked out, and um, and so after that, uh, the association actually started to move around, um, and uh, for uh, quite a long time, it was in an abandoned uh, office building in the heart of the city, and uh, for a while there, we became the biggest architecture center in Europe because uh, of the total area we uh, occupied. Uh, but then, uh, even when we didn't have a space, we actually could organize our programs, and uh, we have more than 40 programs uh, in the past 10 years that were organized. Every year there are at least a dozen different big projects uh, which are in parallel developed uh, um, together and uh, next to one another with different project groups. Uh, but, but I think that the space is necessary, even though we could organize it because as visibility for us, and uh, we are not individual artists, we are an association, so it's, uh, it's more of a gathering space, as we say, uh, but, uh, but it's even in our name that it's a center, and the center without the space uh, couldn't really exist, so three years now, we are in a district, uh, and back to that uh, thing that you mentioned, that's okay, so how do we finance it? Uh, we are in a district which uh, allows us to, uh, and a lot of other art galleries, uh, to rent out spaces owned by the municipality for a very cheap price, uh, and therefore creating this artistic boulevard, basically. Um, and so, so I think that it's very important to, to have a space in that sense, uh, to actually have some visibility. And in the case of uh, Fabrica, of course, the whole association, uh, as I have known it for the past one day, uh, but uh, the whole association is linked to this space, but I think that uh, maybe in 10 years, it has already grown out of this space and became something more um, intangible. Yeah, I, I don't like this division between uh, those from the administration and the others. mostly us, the others, and those from the administration. So I, while thinking about those, I think who's in the administration? Is the driver from the city hall, the, the policeman, the accountant, the chief architect, the mayor, uh, the cleaning men and lady, or lady and man, or whoever? I, I, I'm, I don't like this at all. So for in this case, uh, Stefan, you, you are uh, in between life and death, or you are a ghost or something, working for th the administration, but being uh, not from the administration, or uh, you're, you're dead, yeah, so I'm, I'm dead, <laughs> okay. Anyhow, so salami with soya or without soya, so that, that, was, that was a division, a very strong division, and if we keep it right now, I think we are a little bit wrong, because times are different, in my opinion, nowadays, from Division and barrier becomes like your 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 friends become enemies. Well, when when pencil are all precat, no, fabric are a mass. So, no, 
So you, ca you can think about like what, what once is a barrier can become a, a common ground, what was a common ground can crack, right? So how we face this, so we have to, I mean, in my solution, but I'm an individual artist, I don't carry any organization in my back. We tried to make one and we did not succeed to legalize it. Uh, we just forgot about it. And so um, we learn how to face this new reality. And what was once an icon of division can mean something different today, right? And uh, I'm sometimes I'm amazed how like if if you lo if you live long enough, <laughs> you see these changes. And uh, uh, well, when the fabric and you appear, you appear after we fight twenty years. So that's what we gave you this reality. Now you, you, you fought, fought another 10, so it's a total of 30. <laughs> and the things keep going. So I think it's we have to adapt and to find possibility and bridges, but I, I sti still think it's us and them. say two more things, yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe in ephemerity, temporality of public space very much. I mean, this is one of the basic characteristics. If, if you ocup occupy it, if you got an address, address is private. So uh, you become somebody which lives there and this this turns into into privatization of, of, of the public space so I, it's a lot of uh, thinking around the, the, the definition but I still have some some opinions on that maybe on your fifth question from your list uh, at the end of the discussion so I want to say two more things at this point that uh, you mentioned uh, Ishvan uh, control and power and I think there is power with control which may turn into control and manifest into control and there is power without control and I think art is in this type of kind uh, this kind of, uh, of power it's it, it has power for sure but sometimes or most of the time or, or every time art is not controlling it's just delivering the power it's influencing but not controlling it's producing something, but certainly not control. And the last thing is, is at this point, is, is certainly you said we have to occupy or to claim back the space uh, done. And uh, I totally agree. I think we, we need to do something uh, more than occupy or rebalance, reevaluate the public space. How is it used? Not to whom it belongs, but how is it used? Because in the, in the public space, there is there are commercials, there are uh, festivals you mentioned and, and, and uh, this kind of uh, all kind of manifestation for, for the people which are organized and then you can find in, in Facebook comments like thank you Mr. Mayor for allowing this to happen this happens right now many times, thank you Mr. Mayor which is the uh, personality which synthesizes, e synthesizes every good thing or every pleasant thing which happens in the city i think it happens in many cities or thank you mr president and how, how you want to, to uh, say just uh, transforming or putting everything which happens in the public space uh, on the shoulders or in the in the luggage of the, the in the file of the of the leader of or, or the symbolic leader sometimes it's not the leader sometimes Ishvan you said there are people with money behind and somebody is actually uh, working for uh, for them. So re-evaluation re of, of uh, the use of uh, public space is my, my opinion for today. And the last thing at this point, uh, some years ago I was talking to, to somebody uh, from, from here, from uh, the paintbrush factory, having a, a glass of wine and uh, she asked me, what do you think, what should we do in the future? And I said at that time, move out from this place, find another place, be on move travel speaking of that you open also the, the idea of how do you see the role of artists and the independent culture
Okay. Uh, just shortly getting back to some some of the um, shortly to the sp uh, space thing. Um, space has some meanings, and as long as you you have space means that you have social status. Either you can find a dimension in which you can regenerate your social status and become actor in the general turmoil of negotiating meaning in the city or you don't so if you can different dimension like establishing a blog becoming an influencer having a newspaper having a tv and uh, with this you can reassess your social status you are okay if not you need to resort to the classical things everybody will ask you okay you're an artist do you have a no fuck you so as long uh, as so is not as much, not necessary as such, or not necessarily necessary, but it somehow people decode that you have s social status or not to be a bargainer. This is this is the issues, and for me, this is the the end of the story of the space thing. Other than that, some people need it as a sanctuary. Ne they need it as a space to organize, to meet, to redevelop their uh, social relations, to to whatnot, like the, the guerrillas. They need. Uh, space where they can discuss their secret plans. Okay. Um, what was the question? Now I get into the question. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yes. Um, so, look, I think that this uh, dematerialization of the fabrica is a really smart move. I hope we will survive it. Because I really think, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, so, the idea. <laughs> no. um, look, there is. The, um, I'm reading a lot of military, especially g uh, tactics and strategy, and the idea is, uh, you, some of you know, it's a temporary autonomous zone uh, theory, in which you don't anymore have one space. Instead, you are like a constellation of little lights that travel in the sky, and whenever the power shoots at you, well, uh, they may kill one or two little stars, but the star is, is still traveling. It's, uh, so when you look, look, look from, yeah, there's a thing over there. So that this is pretty much your chance to become somehow less vulnerable by not letting your power enemy to target your, your space. And uh, just, to, just to give you one example, again, me, this is about much more discursive space, about your capacity to control, to generate meaning, to assert this meaning in a discu uh, discursive space, which is finite. Uh, there cannot be more than 10 big teams that are in public space at once talked about. So if you are controlling one and reasserting the position of one, you are suddenly becoming a dialogue partner. And this is what I st started to do uh, in Parku Ferroviari Lord. For a long time, we were generating the protest, the circus, the sc And in the end, we got in the, in the position, the, um, just for fun, 30 seconds of action. Um, when Yonika Rus became Ministry of Transportation, the same day I went to Rektia, who was the deputy for PSD, I said, look, really, you made it ministry. Don't you want to call uh, and uh, tell him that he could sue Pascal? He can take back the the lease on the on the park, etc. And yeah, 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 what a nice idea! I said, Hello, Uku, who has a nice, interesting idea. Two weeks later, the Ministry of Transport pursued Pascani and got the park back. So uh, somehow, the the turn, which was a little bit bad for us, a little bit, but city, because uh, as the city got back the park, they were not anymore. In all this, uh, all that shit, they gave us some money, water, so we could gener generate the carta of the park. And thank you very much. It's uh, it was enough play. Fuck. It. 
the bulldozers come. So th this, uh, you have your moments of contributing to, uh, again, with teams, with topics, to the safe space, and then the guys say, okay, children play the game. That's your story. But again, uh, your chance in the future is becoming less vulnerable by dematerializing, by being your sanctuary, being able to bomb, like we lost sanctuary, the, par the Parco Ferroviari lore, and different dimensions for reasserting your position as a actor. Yes, you need status to become a player in the game. And good organization also as a potential network in the city with other people. Yes. Next up. I think your question was on the role of, of the artist. And what N next, uh, yeah. in your opinion? I, uh, I have a dream that meeting such such this one would happen on a Wednesday morning. Uh, so so we, we don't we don't have to always um, uh, make the art conversation go into the corner of the room in the in the weekend necessarily or uh, like I they are doing all these all these conferences during weekdays uh, we should be able also to have this sort this sort of conversation days we should uh, have art shows before lunch uh, I think thi this is this is something that that's a new th that could be a new plan for for for, for the arts in in, in Cluj to 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 just go out and get get that power, get that influence by, by not only going to the public space, but by also going into into the people's lives and agendas and and and, and offices and and so on and so forth. So I think I think now we are facing these all those typical challenges of a of a booming city that that we have vacation and very expensive housing and all these uh, very complicated mobility situations. So, so uh, I m th this is a, a, a perfect moment to, to for seem to make their point. I think, but but the role the, the we, can, we can organize, I think, is just is by changing the structures. And now, going back to the idea of, of a space that's not a, uh, that that that's also a structure that 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 we can change. So. I think we should have a different uh, imagination of space time where, where, where art are in the city, and including of the time. So why, why have a Sunday or a Saturday? I don't know what day is it. Um, uh, why, why, why have a, your, your, your spare time uh, on this instead of making it and m making this topic a, a, a very relevant topic? Uh, for, 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 for your working time as well. I mean, this is also that I think we should make. Reorganization, maybe Che 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 offer some coffee and a space and a place for uh, weekly meetings for the people who want to uh, I, I actually reorganize themselves. Uh, actually, that's the More place. Than, but than the program you already I developed. Actually, uh, that's the plan. Uh, for now, we only have a, a very institutional name that uh, speaks about our uh, uh, intention to come power and some influence in the city. But now, yes, we, we are we are working on 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 two physical spaces. One will be open next year, and hopefully the other one uh, two years from now. Mm -hmm. And this uh, and yes, this is the idea be be behind them. That will they will be offered not only to our 100 member institutions and organizations, but but to the whole city. Let's see how it goes. Many energies the local scene will have will have until then. Also, you you are aware also that the artists and many independent spaces in Cluj are getting very tired and also uh, losing not only time but energy also to f not only to fight but also to continue their activity. So, yeah. I think uh, my colleague will uh, will do our best. Exactly like the artist. So let's hope it works. Stopped. And <laughs> after that, we, we can uh, give the microphone to the audience also. No, actually, Stefan, sorry. Mm. Always quoting you with the uh, saying uh, you mean achieve leftist uh, 
phones with the rightest instruments. Yes, I, am I quoting you correctly? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, translating this chat terms. Uh, hey, in one year, inshallah, one week, in two years, inshallah, that's thing. Meanwhile, there are things to do. But actually, somehow, uh, these two, the political control, uh, I mean, people among which, sorry, I see Chechen as an uh, extent political control the cultural sphere. And the second is entrepreneurialism. So and I cannot, I fail to see how the, the opposite result to be achieved through these. I, I don't plan to make everybody happy, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can only have. And after that, also, Shabban wants to. Like da, la, la zama in chat voi? Yeah? Ah. Besides this very nice negotiation between uh, Lala and <laughs> Stefan, uh, as an outsider, I have. I can tell that as a total outsider, that I see two things. First, on the. Uh, with what the Ishman was saying, well, the other Stephen, one Stephen, two Stephen, uh, that actually physical faith means power, um, that the, the, the fight for the public space in Cluj was lost by artists in favor of untold, uh, and then that what I, uh, and I deeply apologize for my friends that actually work in performing arts in Cluj, but what I see, I at some point start seeing, was that all the energy for, uh, all the artistic energy went towards preserving the space, uh, and not in, uh, you know, getting out of the place, of the space. That's why I'm, I'm, Definitely wondering. Well, I'm, I'm asking for uh, uh, you know reset of what a physical space means for performing arts, because at some point uh, it actually affects creativity and actually blocks everybody in a fight for uh, you know for preserving the space and for uh, and. Everything they create goes around the space. And this is different than the fight for the right to a place to live. Because the space for performing arts is basically a, a sign of power, especially if we are talking about where that physical space is based, because nobody's going in at the end of Manashtur, because they will find places there. That is my very humble contribution to a subject I know nothing about. Thank you. Uh, thank you. To, to continue a little bit or to rely to, to Ishvan's, uh, I would add, Kuku, God bless you wherever you are. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. All right, I got it. So louder. Uh, what is wonderful about art? There are many things wonderful about art. My opinion, certainly in your opinion, but what is what I'm uh, mentioning now is that it is endless, and we can say that there are some pieces of art of which the artist is physical part, and these have a, s a kind of relation with space, but I think it's a temporary relation, and there are, there is kind of art, mostly fine art. Uh, of which the artist is not physical part of. He may not even meet the art, maybe uh, the artist, maybe it's not contemporary with the art, and it doesn't matter. You have the relation uh, with, with the work of art after years, centuries sometimes. So uh, we, I think we have to, to focus the discussion about what is this independent art in relation with the space, because it's not the same thing, I think. There is really interesting uh, debate on what kind of space, what space should be public, what space should be not public, but accessible by the public in certain terms. And uh, 
So we, you actually basically asked about the role of the artists in the future for the city. That was the question. And I think the role is quite clear. It's to create for the people something which is giving in its own way of the artist hope. And it's making life, uh, let's say, even if it's uh, showing you the dark, the dark side of the... It's, it's a way of of giving hope by showing, by identifying the threat, mm -hmm. by, by showing the dark side of life, eventually. But it's, in, in my opinion, it's also a way of giving uh, hope. That's, that's a clear role since ever. I think it does not modify uh, in time as a role. It may modify as types of manifestation. And this is something else uh, wonderful about art. It, it, it never ends. It's, it's in reinventing, discovery and so on and so forth. And the last in intervention about this is about this che che che. Uh, when you say this, when you pronounce I see the helmet of Yuri Gagarin, <laughs> which actually, you know, it was an artist from another empire. All right, and this guy, Yuri Gagarin, actually uh, uh, had something uh, written on his helmet. You know, that's it. And then you. <coughs> no Gagarin, but Gaga today. Well, <laughs> like Gaga. Uh, <laughs> there, there's this saying they have it now in Hong Kong as a strategy to oppose the, the violence. It's called be water. That's the strategy they have, meaning fluid, um, uh, movable, uh, hard to catch. Right. So if it's the role of the artist in the city is be water, right? Stay critical, fight for every centimeter, uh, fight for every kind of uh, bit of a role you have in the city. Right? I mean, I will fight for every centimeter of printed newspaper who have a sense, or for any blog, or for every space, for every independent art or initiative in this town, and I will not back down. And I will not go in peace, but you know, I will make every scandal possible about what's going on right now. And I think um, <coughs> I will never be untold. <laughs> right? or never see, or, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, will, uh, I will give myself a role important in this. Uh, I, I don't want to accept the fact that me, as an artist, I can live only in bankrupt cities, right? That's only my place when the city is bankrupt. What? So, um, and you know, you as a um, cultural worker, right? So we are facing, I'm coming from a culture where you mistrust the state completely. Now I have to mistrust the private, right? No? And I'm an agent of gentrification in the main same time. So <laughs> what kind of a future do you want me to play here, right? No, no, that's not. No. That's not how, how it should be, right? I mean, um, when we speak about public space, that's the story. It's not about cars, it's not about living, it's not about cars, it's not urban, it's, it's a critical space. So you have to reconsider the critical aspect of it. And we have a voice, and we know how to do it, no? So be water. Maybe the flow can to the public also. That was for a while learned. <laughs> about um, the, like the question which was also the title of this panel and maybe you we, I know that you are not maybe the only and the perfect people to answer to it but maybe we can make an exercise of imagination do you personally think that uh, independent art should be financed from the public money because uh, le le <laughs> because there is there is this situation in which I was talking to someone who is a, a it's part he is part of the public of Fabrica de Pensula and of other uh, 
uh, independent art spaces from Cluj. And the, the what made me somehow not understand what's happening and how could I answer, and this is why I came to ask you this question, because I couldn't find an answer. How do you explain to people who are actually art connoisseurs and whatever you want, and they enjoy it and they like it, but they don't think that all this support should come or must come from the from the public mind. Is it something about the, our need for art or our uh, need as society for art or how should we explain this thing? Like imagine that you are not in Fabrica de Pensule, you are somewhere else and someone is asking you why should you do this? If you find it not appropriate, you cannot answer. It's, okay. it's like, sorry, uh, 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 action, you know, it's time, uh, every question like this. In every, for every form, there's somebody who, that uh, it uh, uh, costs less, it be financed this way, that way, or that. First, uh, we, uh, we are, as workers in the field, all in the mood of, of uh, in a self-explanatory mood. We self-justify justify ourselves online. It's like Facebook. To justify all time on Facebook, we are starting an over the education on why I uh, need uh, health. Why we need education. Well, actually, if somebody does, there's one level which you can explain it, like a lot of papers on it, but the effort of explaining each and every is a little time. Uh, and uh, I uh, well, that's why. But on the other hand, it's that simple. You know, this is the, the, the uh, you know the, the cost of this performance, this event. You don't believe, you don't think the art should, in general, should publicly fund. This is how much you should. This is your invoice. That simple, because otherwise, you know, it's like it's impossible, and it's a killing culture. Arts, there's no uh, nine percent of in Romania is form of or publicly support. Uh, it's mainly because, and because we're as a nation poor for anything. If uh, we are all getting into the explanatory uh, justification uh, mood all the time, it will all kill us. Sometimes it's a question. Yes. Okay. Of course. <laughs> But, but there are several things to talk later on. Uh, pay for the art or do the artist? What's the level of payment? Uh, when do you pay? Advance or are you paying success? In case of failure and many, many other questions. But yes, of course, it has financed. Uh, also wanted to ask. Um. But does it work? I cannot really hear myself, so... We're recording now. Ah, ah okay, cool. Uh, okay, I didn't really understand the uh, part of the discussion about uh, space, needing space, if the fabrica can reinvent itself, uh, because for me the question was not about can art exist uh, or like the fabrica, could it exist as a delocalized, relocalized, de Probably it could, but the problem for me is not that. The problem for me is that like a cultural institution that for like 10 years uh, produces surplus value, surplus value in real terms for the city, like the city, the mayor, the officialities can go to Brussels, they could go to Europe and say we have artists, we have civil society, we have people engaged and they are doing wonderful stuff. Sounds great. That happens. And 10 years after, when this institution actually 
um, comes uh, face to face with the ruthless logic of the market, uh, the housing market, everybody's like, yeah, you're independent. That's not cool. Like, surplus value was produced for the city, and now the city is saying like, yeah, but you're independent, come on, figure something out. I understand that the independent uh, sector can see this as, a, and it should be, for, in, in my opinion, a moment for uh, more critic, more um, radicalization, as Dan said, but we shouldn't forget the fact that this is wrong. This is not okay. What is happening is not okay. And we should not only like, yes, we all the time need to reinvent. Of course, that's those uh, discussions are all the time value, we, uh, valid. We can have them all the time. But the specificality of this is not, yeah. So it is really about this. The specific of uh, your question is also not only specific to this time and it has in 2000 in the ex rota in Berlin. It in 2008 in Budapest, or I actually know. The Probably. Uh, that was a shame. Uh, like, what I'm. Yes, of course, not okay. Like, from an outside point of view, it's a shame. But uh, there are different ways how to deal with it. Uh, one of my favorite uh, ways of dealing uh, with any. Trouble is with a protest, say that way, which I saw once. It was in uh, Lyon, France, and they have a different culture of doing uh, stations. There was a big text theater for the theater. They didn't cry it, they didn't have a discussion about it. was, I don't know, I was. But what I saw from it was they occupied where and they did a two day festival out. Of the independent were there performing uh, to the night, uh, making them them show themselves, and uh, and that also way pressure, like some pressure on uh, on maybe yes that should sir or could sir, uh, but I think that it's not uh, uh, like it is, but, uh, but it's not to uh, to this situation. That shortly. Um, actually, you are totally right, and uh, only you are right. But, um, we've been producing not surplus value. We, we've been producing cultural patrimony of the city, lingering around for some while the cultural patrimony. And uh, so, uh, your sentence sounds like, now oh, it's unfair. Now, this is the point. Uh, when you say unfair, you are claim to reference to site that you would now that's the that there, are, there are no natural rights, not even me on your right to live all are negotiate and actually we did in first we all knew that we are paying value patrimony and so on, and we selling those for that money that we were back the city of landing were giving it to us they were they that we were uncomfortable and sometimes pain in generated then uh, what was lost in play yes okay uh, here is that there is nothing as exceptionally artists that that's a create and whatnot uh, this is a regime of product meaning the, the art which negotiation regimes of production thing sometimes like a deal some don't and see, this is not a moment oh also unfair I'm trying to see can I in my negotiate position? That's all right.
No, I think this should be at the municipality. I, I have no comment. For, for comment, uh, we did not include, did not title of your capital of college. Absolutely. That's it. Let, uh, let's look at things as they happen. Uh, but somebody else has danger to lose. Sure, of course, they, they have serious problems. This is not about. Thank you. 
2010, me and my wife, Kia Prashovsky, we had a studio in the middle of Bucharest. A studio from the Union of Artists. And from almost the beginning, we decided that this studio is not to produce our own work, but because it is in the middle of the city, and it's a real estate, we pay cheap rent, we can use it for the rest of the community. So for 20 years, we made that a kind of alternative school, meetings, gatherings, all kinds of stuff. We've been kicked out. Did you heard about? Yeah. Did you ever care? Did your life be affected? So did anybody care about this? Being kicked out after 10 years. So you have to claim that up, I agree. Nobody will care. You will care. You have to claim this back. It's your knowledge shall work. And I agree with you. That's a new context. Ah, they don't need you. Ah. So you have to really rediscuss really this with the authority or whatever. I don't know. You have to invent okay. Wait. But what we did being kicked out, <laughs> we went back to our hometown. So as a general statement, we failed. We never get to Berlin, but we get to Sibiu. <laughs> so uh, and um, we start to do what you said trying to make alliances with the existing institutional situation in Sibiu. And we, read it, we discover that there are these forgotten institutions like live, public library, where it's one of the most democratic spaces you can have. There's no pay, there's no ticket to enter, all the age can come, you know. So yes, install the... Uh, uh, this is now, now one of the readings you know, of the public library in Sibiu, it's like an art installation. And it's there for long term, let's say. So we realize this situation is here. There are some platforms, some spaces. We cannot open again our home because it's our private home now and we don't have time. And, uh, but the library is open anyway. So all the knowledge we have and all the resources we put there, so it's, you can't, the entire collection of today is there. Park at anything is there, all the books we got we could donate and stuff like that. So, and this was one of the questions from the entire day which are your allies? What allies do you have in this city? Who is with you when something happens? Which is your, you know, because from, from outside, public uh, education is a success story, right? or whatever you did in Cluj with participatory, with speaking with the mayor, everything seems so successful because every other city is so way back. Really. So, I think you have to, I mean, really analyze <coughs> the situation and like, really gain a new perspective to it. I think you are very strong here. Really, in this time. I mean, I'm living in a form of cultural capital. <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> you got really lucky. So, oh yeah. <laughs> it doesn't change. It changed in a different, very superficial way. You know, well, the city got a track, a, a vector, but it's tourist and very cheap, and it's like you know crowded. The prices, but, but it's not like a kind of very consistent. So I think you have to bet, you have to really use this power you got here. The fact that you still have a link to the politics and you can ask him and he's coming to this meeting. And you know, it's like we meet here and this is people here who still here, not the left, right? In other words, there are five people coming. You cannot get people in one room anymore. They get bored in the five seconds. So I think you should just use this power again and not just give it away. Exactly this thing, Ella. Uh, I would like to follow up a bit on Nicholas' uh, sentence with the instrumentalization. I understand if you don't want to comment, Stefan, on this uh, thing, but what you certainly see is that Chechetia is in a very much privileged position. 
uh, being so much supported politically, financially, etc. Et and many of the people from JJJ uh, actually come from or have their roots in the independent culture sector, so that's a really huge advantage. And I, my question is to you, respectfully, uh, can you imagine yourself as an institution with all this human power? It, it, so it, it's so easy to just meet independent people and, oh, I feel you, sister, I'll shit for you, to step forward from this and become a real middleman, a negotiation helper of the independent cultural sector. Allow me before answering. You should, no, 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 no. You should just also advise him what to do. No, no, no. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm grateful. Do you want
I just want to say that we are paying the rent. We established as a team last July, last year. So we're still in the rent and we don't have our, our own space either. So, but when we have it, we're more than <laughs> so maybe maybe you invite us somewhere. <laughs> I also learned in, in my work in the neighborhood. Once I got out of the factory, uh, and it was an interesting experiment to go in the, as you said, Julia, uh, earlier in the end of Monastur, we realized, okay, we didn't have an official space, we were fighting for a space, and then we hoped for a potential community center to be our, like, dream space for the community. When we didn't have that, and I wanted also to complete what Dan said, we realized, okay, but there are other spaces in the neighborhood. The library for us was the perfect community center, and the ladies from there were great. And also the, the local bars were very nice places to meet. And also we realized to, to gather the community together, we didn't uh, find one space, fighting for a green space. So somehow this fluidity, uh, also, uh, like having the meetings in my place, or my, and our colleagues realized that the community we were working with, it was very important and valuable for that open space, but behind the lack of uh, office in the neighborhood and all these frustrations that we accumulated also, not having a fixed point on the map. But in the same time, yeah, yesterday I had a meeting, uh, drinking beer and uh, a pizza in the cheapest place in the neighborhood. I advise you also to go to Kokoba. And in the end, yeah, if you want to gather the people and if you want to organize and mobilize, I think you can find it and water and maybe a tea and coffee. And uh, I advise you also to continue the discussion with the beer and maybe stay in here and also I will let well, my Nala, colleagues... Well, you are so famous here for having this kind of very activistic, very social left critical, right? So you have this responsibility to keep it <laughs> going, right? Because that's a kind of a model. Make everybody in Monastery. No, not you, but in general, here in group. No, very active, very on the street, very protest, very fighting for, you know, no uh, uh, living condition and everything. From the rest of the country, the success story of Kuj is 6% of the people. From the country, right? Yeah, but the success so, story of Kuj also uh, invaded us with other ways in which our city is not, not anymore the, the city we dream of. Sure, but tell the rest. Yes, I'm telling them. Tell them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, my hope is also about just uh, being aware that we are, we are all part of the entrepreneurial city, of the city that is becoming more and more entrepreneurial. And how do we position ourselves? It's our own responsibility. And each of us takes the responsibility for that. I'm not accusing anyone. Everybody knows where he or she or his or her institution stays in relation with this entrepreneurialized uh, city. Some are using battles, some are making battles, and new uh, coalitions are going to be formed, and et cetera. And if you see the dynamics of the city, uh, when I was talking with my colleague that we are tired, I also, we also maybe expect uh, the younger generation to come and to, uh, to, to be, uh, continue the enthusiasm also. And to you know, fight I, against you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but also I think the We're city done. sometimes, your, your and if you saw the, the crowded student streets of these uh, days, I was wondering new people in the city, <coughs> new, dream, new personal dreams, what, how do they see the city of today? Do they know about Fabrica de Pensula? And many of them, of course, not. Do they know that this existed? Also, in, in my tour today, a lot of people didn't know about the factory, and today was the first time they arrived. And it was nice, always a good time to discover uh, spaces that they, yeah, they didn't realize they existed. So it's an interesting context here. Can I make a joke? And then we come to the so I was thinking in the past, this is very spontaneous, but uh, still a joke. Uh, in the past, artists need to uh, model and to draw and to inspire. Yeah, no,
And now I think artists need enemies. <laughs> All right? Somebody, you, can, somebody to fight with, somebody to, go to oppose. <laughs> exactly. And I think this is one of the fabulous jobs of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Dear artist, do you want me to be your enemy? <laughs> Could be a joke. You don't sign up to be boxer players. Well, <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's very dis I think it's very disillusionating if you are just romanticizing the idea that artists should always fight, that we always have to die of hunger, that we have to be on the side of stuff. It's really not okay. No, 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 it's not dying of hunger, dying in honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same yeah. for you, thank you. But still dying. Fat joke. Not dying yet because there is a night ahead of us. Now to concentrate ourselves with whom to associate and 